All right, well, thank you, everybody, for allowing me to be here today and to talk to you all. I am going to talk a little bit about Interact Project and some of the things that I'm doing with that. I also want to start off with one thing, and I want you guys to sort of think about and grapple with for a second. And that is this question right here. Take a moment, think about it. You know, I, I was born in a, in a city called Richmond, California, for those of you who don't know. It's a small city in um, the Bay Area. And uh, as a kid, you know, I had uh, several influences in my life. Those influences were things that, you know, were a part of me and were a part of the way that I, you know, um, um, uh, interacted with folk and the way that I learned and the way that I uh, sort of admired and came to be where I am now. When I was a young person, I, you know, everybody in my community were doing, you know, a couple of different things. One of the things that they were doing was music. You know, everybody was like into music. My thing was Michael Jackson. Yes, I have the Michael Jackson jacket. That is me. <laughs> I also had the dance moves. I can't do it now, but I could do it back then. I was very inspired by Michael. It was one of the things that was in my house. My parents had the albums. I saw him on TV. And I wanted to be like him. I wanted to be Michael Jackson. Another thing was sports. It was, a, it was this, this desire to sort of use the talents that I had and, and the size that I had to, to be somebody, in my opinion, to be somebody, was to be this, 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 this athlete. And so I pursued that along with all the other people in my neighborhood because it was one thing that was accepted. So because of that experience, you know, it's like I sort of fell into the two groups. My inspiration and my influence was music and was sports. You know, one of the other things that I also like to do was I like to draw, you know, and I was, you know, looking back on one of those sort of nerdy kids, if you will. When I'm away from everybody, I'm away from all my friends and things like that, I used to go in a corner and I used to draw. And I was a very hyperactive kid, as most kids are. One of the things that really gave me solace in this world was, was actually sitting down and drawing and something I did alone and by myself. I didn't really realize at that time that this would ever be something that I would do. As I got older, my influences were basketball. And it was something that I aspired to be because as a young kid, you know, I gravitated towards that. I was good enough to get a basketball scholarship and then I went to play at the University of Washington. So I was heavily influenced at a, at a very early age and because of that influence, that led me to pursue what I felt like was what I was destined to be. I started off playing, playing um, college basketball, and I eventually played uh, in Europe for seven years professionally. And that influence is one of the things that really, I believe, sort of uh, helped me get, as I would say, out of the hood. It was one of those things, right? Because it allowed me to get to college to actually be exposed to other things. Ultimately, it was, design that really sort of brought me to, to where, I want, where I am right now today. And when I went to college, you know, I was, you know, as a high schooler, I, I thought I was going to make it to the NBA. It was one of the things that I really believed passionately that I was going to make it. And after my sophomore year, I came to the realization that I probably wouldn't make it. You know, I wasn't getting the time that I wanted. And uh, I had to make a decision. And that decision became find a major, find something. So I searched through a catalog. I literally just started, you know, um, searching for, for things that I could possibly do. And it was actually my mother that found it. She said, okay, well, son, you know, you like to draw when you were young. And, you know, and, and as a graphic designer, you guys probably understand this story. Everybody always says, you know, you know drawing, that's what graphic designers do. And it was kind of ironic because that's what my mother said to me, but I had really no idea what graphic design was. I never heard of it. Because of that experience, and because of the fact that I, wasn't, I felt like I wasn't gonna make it, I made a shift and I just took a design class. And I said, okay, I'm just gonna try this thing. As a result of that, I ended up getting in the program, but that was not enough. Because these influences and this inspiration that comes from other people in your life molds you and makes you who you are. And as I started, these two gentlemen right here were paramount to me. Tony Gable is a graphic designer in Seattle that when I was coming up, 
very early in my age, he was somebody that I gravitated towards. You know, he was someone who was doing the types of things that I felt like I could do. He had his own business, he was successful at it, and uh, he was somebody that I can go with, with you know, uh, um, questions about, you know, not only just design, but just I, my identity within design. Because at that time, there wasn't a lot of designers of color, and there still really isn't to this very day. Another guy who was a very big influence in my life was this guy, Doug Watton, on the, on the right-hand side over here. Doug was a professor of mine, and from the very beginning, he was very instrumental in sort of encouraging me and having an influence over me and helping me sort of shape the way that um, my design career would, would, eventually, would eventually mold into. Really, the interesting thing about all of this is, is that sometimes you're influenced by things and you don't really know that you're influenced by things. Sometimes it's subconscious. It, you, you just end up doing something or acting a certain way because you've been exposed to something for so long or you've been exposed by something that you're really inspired by and it's not something that necessarily that you celebrate or you remember, but it becomes part of your psyche. Tony Gable's poster was you know, one of the things that I really was really interested in. He had this a very different style than Doug's. His way of using his creativity with, with the designs that he did, and this poster in particular, he had this very sort of whimsical, laid back and cultural flavor to it, if you will. On the other hand, Doug had this very sort of modern, crisp, clean approach to his design work, very structured, very grid-like, and I sort of gravitated to both of these styles, actually. And then as I started looking over some of the work that I've done, and I was just like, wow, you know, there is a little bit of correlation there. And this wasn't something that consciously set out to, to be like that. It was just something I think that just sort of manifested itself from the experiences and the influence that I had from these two gentlemen. As I started to work, you know, in an industry, I still carried over the same design attitude towards my work, which was heavily influenced and inspired by people that influenced and inspired me. As I started to, you know, uh, work through my career and sort of work on projects and think about, like, what are ways where I can start to do this same type of thing and I can influence other people, that's how the Interact Project erected. That's how it came about. Interact Project is a program that I started in 2004. I've been working on this thing for about 11 years. And it is truly one of the most passionate things, the most involved, the most frustrating things that I, I've ever done in my life, actually. When there's something that you really care about and something that you really love, you find a way to make that happen. You find a way where you can use all the things that you've learned over the years and make it happen. And that comes from passion. That also comes from an understanding of coming from some place where you see the need and you want to see good things happen to the kids that, that are like you or strive or want to be where you are. So what is Interact Project? It's obviously working with kids. We've been doing this for a very long time. We have classes throughout the year, workshops. We work with kids from middle school to high school. You know, we work with parents and kids. And we really just try to reach them the best way we can and give them advice and give them mentorship and build them up and have them work on exercises that teach them about not only just design careers, but what does it mean to be a designer? What types of things that that designers go through from the actual visual style to the actual like um, constructing and, and, and critical thinking and all the things that, that we as designers go through when we're trying to solve problems or we're trying to build some type of innovation within a project. So we really try to give these kids the foundational skills, but we also do our job of not only just teaching them in the classroom, but providing advocacy initiatives that allow us to be able to teach them outside of the classroom. So we have you know, a video series that we do. And we interview various different industry practitioners that have worked in the business for a while to have them talk about their stories. We really try to work on um, highlighting designers of color uh, from diverse backgrounds to sort of talk about things that they've done. But we also try to work with people that have done things that kids know about. Because context, for me, is very important. It's very important for kids to know and be able to connect the dots between things that they see every day 
and then the people that are actually working on these things later in life. You know, we do lectures as well, whatever we can to support what goes on in the classroom. We also work with various different companies, you know, we work with Apple and Twitter and, you know, Dropbox and all these different companies to work with the young people, to teach them about the things that they're doing in their company and expose them to these different careers so they know that it's an option. Exposure is the key. Remember what I talked about early, influence, right? Things that you see, things you're exposed to have, a, have an impact on your life. And we're working with kids as early as middle school, so we want to do everything that we can to inspire them. This is a question I get this a lot. Why design? At all the things, why design? Yes, I am a graphic designer. Of course, I like design. It's actually deeper than that for me. And I actually believe that design is really a natural extension of life. If you don't believe me, look at the way that every living being, every living thing in this world behaves. It's the natural need to create, to develop, to innovate, to design. It's, it's intuitive. It's a part of who we are as people. Because of that, design is important. We think about all the devices and everything that we interact with and we touch with every day is essential. I talk to people all the time and they always ask me, you know, various different questions about design. And I say, let me put it in context for you. When you sit in a really comfortable chair, it's not really a big deal, right? You don't even notice it. You don't look at the chair and say, wow, this is a really comfortable chair. Well, maybe sometimes you do, but most times you don't. But when you sit in that really uncomfortable chair, <laughs> right? The point is, is that design is really important. And it's not just about just making things look beautiful, but it's about the function side of it. So for that reason, it's really important to our lives. It's really important for the way that we live and the way that we interact with things every single day. From the time you wake up, from the time you go to bed, you've interacted with something that someone has designed. The other question I get, why underserved minority youth in communities of color? People ask me all that time, why? Let's just look at some statistics. Black and Latino youth are the fastest growing populations in the U.S. Fact. Creative fields are projected to be one of the most promising new opportunities for employees over the next seven years. Fact. It is true that the top African-American workforce categories are management, business, science, and arts occupations. What this means to me is that the need to be creative, to, to the creative outlet and, and the needs for arts and, and, and expressing yourself is important. It's important. But when you track and look at art schools and design schools across the country, something's missing. What's going on? Why is this happening? Why is there such a gap? And one of the things that Interact Project is really sort of trying to figure out and one of the things that we're really working on right now to try to solve. Let's step back a little bit and let's think about this holistically. I play sports, so I use a lot of sports analogies, so forgive me. Let's talk about influence. Kids flock to sports. They love it. It's one of the things that is rampant in the community. You won't find a lack of love for sports in the community at all whether it's basketball, baseball, football, whatever the sport is, soccer, you won't find a lack of it. But when you step back and you think about really statistically what that means for high school to college, we're talking about kids that are actually getting from high school to college to play these sports. 2.9%, college to pro, 1.3%. High school to pro, 0.03%. Can't deny that. But we have tons and tons of kids that are looking to get into these sports, even though the numbers are statistically saying that it's probably not going to happen for you. And I was one of those kids. You know, I, I, was, I was one of those ones was like, you know what? I was 6'9". When I left high school, I was all East Bay. I was projected to make it in most people's eyes. I had everything, you know, I had the height, I had the quickness, I had the athletic ability, but I didn't make it. The key to that is education, exposure, and context. So that's what we do at Interact Project. Our education and our curriculum is based around this trifecta right here. Education, we're teaching kids, obviously. The exposure side of it, which is where the influence comes from, 
and then the context, which I'll get into that. Breaking down what we do. We have Youth Design Academy, we have Learning Labs, Video Game Academy, we have a video series, we have an entrepreneurship focus, and then obviously resources. So Youth Design Academy is something that we do when we work with middle school kids and we give them the basic principles of design. What does it mean to design something? And we take them from 2D to 3D, all right? And this is a curriculum that has been developed and used by volunteers. My team and the people that I work with have been volunteering to work on this project with me. You know, I don't even take a salary to do this. It's all passion and all heart. Learning labs, that's working with high schoolers and middle school kids, and those are a series of different events from workshops, lectures, and studio tours. So that sort of, the lectures and studio tours sort of mixes in with the advocacy side of what we do. Video Game Academy is just that. They work with kids and teach them about not only just building video games, but how do you create a video game that's actually sold? How do you do that? How do you create you know, a name and start to build on something that is yours and something you can take pride into and actually do yourself? Design, it's a video series that we do. It's the advocacy side. It's us being able to broadcast to the world, broadcast to the community, broadcast to kids all over and say, this guy worked at the New York Times Magazine. This guy designed the Beats headphones. This guy designed Nike shoes. All these people that are designing things that we look at every single day. So we're going behind the lens and having them talk about their stories, and not only that, but talking about how they got into design and why it's important. Then we have this entrepreneurship focus that we're starting because we want kids to be empowered by building things, creating things that they care about and that it's important to them in their own context. What is context that I'm talking about? So I'm terming it cultural context. And basically what that means is that you are influenced by all the things that are around you when you grow up and, and as you get older, there's all these things around you that allow you to perceive, learn, and develop ideas about you know, your surrounding or, or think about like how you might create or design something. So there's this context. It's like, I live in a world where I do X, Y, and Z. And because of that, I tend to understand that world and that world makes me who I am. It's this context. So we try to build that context into our curriculum. What does that mean? We have a goal, obviously we want to make our curriculum light, flexible, modular, and expansive. We want to be able to build out these various different parts, and we've already done that. Then we have this focus on, obviously on design, underserved communities, middle and high school education. That's another thing we do. Now, our objective obviously is we want to make impact. By making impact, it's, it's bringing on this influence within the kids. So the cultural context side of it, just to be specific, is us being able to take all these different principles that we have in our curriculum and actually drop that into the community and learn about what are the things kids are doing in the community and develop our program around the things that they do and the things that they love to do. So for example, that could be, let's say, starting a basketball league. You know, we're talking design now, and we're talking about starting a basketball league where kids are designing the, jer the jerseys, designing the logo, designing the shoes, designing the socks. It's all cultural context, right? They are used to that, they understand that, so we wrap our education around the things that they understand and the things that they like and the things that they understand around them, their cultural context. And the goal of it is to make this, this impact influential in kids' life at a very young age. So that as they get older and as they start to develop in their thinking, they're able to take the things that they've learned and the things that they've experienced and be influenced to either join or, or be a designer or do something productive in their life. So in closing, the three things, if we were to wrap everything up into what we're doing, develop curriculum and programming that supports youth and underserved communities, use cultural context to provide influential learning experiences, and then lastly, expose and connect youth to thousands of design careers. Because we believe that once that we do our side of not only educating them and exposing them and giving them this knowledge, 
we have to also be able to support them and allow them to get to the careers that they're working towards. If you need to contact me, you want to contact me, info at interactproject.org. Thanks for listening to me.